Hey everybody, I'm Sarah Wiseman and we are going forward uh, with part two of our 2024 trends report. And the first part, part one, which you can go to uh, in the links or if you subscribe, you can find that pretty easily, um, is the channeled forecast that talks about this quality of time that we're in. And this part, I split things up this year, so it wouldn't be too long. Uh, this part, the 2024 trends report, is really about the specific areas and aspects that you're going to wa want to watch for the year ahead. Um, the specific kind of parts of society that are in the midst of a lot of change. Uh, this is also channeled. It's just a little more specific. And as I mentioned, I think before in part one, I love to see um, the trends part here is what I really look at looking back over the years, like what, what happened, what, what was accurate, what really showed up. And I found that there's actually a ton of accuracy here, and I'm pretty excited about that. So anyway, okay, 2024. It is an eight year in numerology and eight speaks of service and sort of this infinite eight cycle of life, death, creation, destruction. In 2024, we see a shift from the ideas of personal gain, competition and waste, and we're shifting to service cooperation and conservation or stewardship. And this is a paradigm shift that leads a new global awareness, or maybe a new global awareness is leading the paradigm shift. You know, they're sort of, as we awaken, we change. As we change, we awaken. These are all always going together. So the first one, we all know this, but it's kind of interesting um, to have it so clearly. Number one, old structures fall political, religious, business, all of it is shifting under the weight of massive change all at once. None of it is as before. Change comes from new generations arriving, those who have been born for this. Change comes from older generations transitioning. And transitioning, they could mean retiring, but Really what they more likely mean is uh, people transitioning out of this lifetime. All of this old structure is falling away, not only the physical or practical structure, but the structure in your, in your mind. Let it all fall away. Look with new eyes. Find solutions new ways. So we've been hearing about old structures fall for several years now, but we're kind of at this place where it is really out with out with the old out with the dated out with things that have been around too long it is the fresh new the fresh new ideas that are needing to come in and most of it comes from new generations i would hope that millennials and gen z's are running for office that's what i would hope uh, species awareness, number two, it's not about humans. All species must be valued and protected in order to maintain the delicate independence of the life, interdependence of the life cycle. This is a new idea for most of you. Free your mind from the idea that humans are most important. And here's the interesting thing. What is small? is much more important. And this feels like a clue, like what is small? Well, you know, we think of species as humans and animals are, you know, different animal species, or maybe we think of species as plants, different species, but they're saying what is small is much more important. And this leads me to think of like um, tiny organisms, species or tiny bacteria, or something little, what is small is much more important. And you know, I, I first I thought, well, is it like mushrooms and fungi? But I think it's smaller. So just pay attention as the news comes out, like 
this awareness of what is small that's perhaps holding us all together. Coming in at number three, which is pretty high up on the list, ETs among us. It's right here, visitors from the stars return, except they've never left. They don't come from spaceships, they've been hiding in plain sight. You will begin to meet unusual beings who have new ways of solving problems. It is not all about science and technology. The real need of humanity is spiritual and these beings show you how to increase telepathy between you and them and amongst yourselves. As you meet them, study their calm and connection. They are here to help. So visitors from the stars return, except they've never left. They don't come from spaceships. They've been hiding in plain sight. It's not about science and technology. So I'm personally <laughs> phenomenally excited about that. And uh, we'll just see what happens. Keep your eyes open and be open to even um, different dimensionalities or different dream states you're in or different beings that come just as you know we have the, the guides and the angels or the departed are often flitting around in different dimensions and we can access that it's possible it's that way i don't know number four pollution and waste who gave you the idea that you could consume without concern for the ravaged left behind who gave you the idea that profit for a few was valid? These are, I mean, this is industrial revolution is when this began, but who, who, where did these ideas come from? These are incorrect ideas created in a time of greed and power. Gaia, Mother Earth, rebels as she should. You rebel as you should. You can only live in alignment with Gaia. It's pretty direct, pretty direct. This isn't about recycling our juice bottle. This is about massive societal change at the corporate level. This is, this is about legislative change, business change. Um, we know what this is. Number five food breakthroughs. The new weight loss drugs are the tip of the iceberg and their opposite is true. If one person can lose weight, another person can be saved from starvation. Even as overconsumption is ended, it is entirely possible for no one to be hungry. Different idea. Processing and packaging for profit has made you sick processed food is the new tobacco i think they mean that the new thing that uh when tobacco suddenly it came out it's bad for you this was decades and decades ago and everyone was like what and people quit and this idea of processing and packaging is bad for us so interesting last year 2023 there was uh this prediction that came in uh which was about weight loss drugs and then and then at that time, there was this hint that they could also be used for other things. Then, of course, we saw it was actually the reverse. Ozempic uh, came from diabetes drugs and then it used in a different application. But this idea, if one person can lose weight, another person can be saved from starvation. Interesting. And I think this means globally, worldwide. Number six, identity, sexuality, new generations arrive with no clear understanding of why identity demarcations exist. It makes no sense to them. It's an old idea, once valid, but no longer real. Again, old structures tumble. Um, those, of, those of us who are older, we remember of time when the demarcation was just, you know, male or female things are blurred now, new generations arrive with no, like, why are there demarcations? So this is what is coming into the evolution. This is not um, a moral question, or it's not an ideological question. It's just 
this is what's happening. We're evolving. Um, you know, plants don't sit around and say who's the boy plant and who's the girl plant. Most plants are, a lot of plants are both things. I mean, just like animals, I don't know, just old ideas based on religion, based on uh, conf conforming to gender roles and just this is not people come in and they're like what we don't we don't, we don't this makes no sense to us seven climate adaptation for the near future you cannot manage the client so you must adapt you must move migrate live differently this is a great relief for gaia you have seen from ancient populations that humanity moves lives differently at different times you must also adapt now uh, eight politics shift politicians do not interest the younger generations and barely hold the interest of the elders younger generations focus on what matters to them and political posturing is not on the list we witness a complete overhaul of who's in charge and how government is run uh, the parliamentary system, the global alliance begins. And I don't know how many of you um, are younger or who know, especially Gen, Gen Z, especially works, has from youth, from childhood, been working collaboratively. They've um, learned how to work creatively in collaboration. They've learned how to make decisions in collaboration. They um, they work together very, very well as a group, and this generation is especially well suited to the parliamentary system, the global alliance. They are comfortable working in collaboration. Nine. This is kind of low on the list. We, you'd think it would be the top, but it's not. Elections fizzle. We expect a year of election drama in 2024, but that doesn't unfold. The old guard falls like dominoes. They're finally gone. Gen X, millennials, Gen Z infiltrate as they have been born to do. It's time. The old guard falls like dominoes. They're finally gone. Does this mean they're in jail? <laughs> Most of them probably are, are facing a lot of that. Does this mean they die? Does this mean they retire? I don't know. They fall like dominoes. They're finally gone. Elections fizzle. It's not what we think it's going to be. At least at this point in uh, I'm recording this um, to hit or to open to you guys in January 2024 so by by election time it's way different than we thought 10 population shifts populations decline in first world countries expand in third world countries the demographics of the planet shift within two generations so that's in about 30 years, maybe 40. Gaia needs this change. The demographics of the planet shift within two generations. Countries that aren't having kids, um, their demographics change. Countries that are having kids, those younger ones are ready to step up and lead. 11, and here's this other piece of right with population birth control. This is blowing my mind a little bit. New birth control arrives without side effects, need pres prescription without religious or moral resistance. This shifts what people expect from a lifetime. Now, I got to admit, I have no idea what this is. Um, New birth control arrives without side effects need for prescription without religious or moral resistance. But what this means, this shifts what people expect from a lifetime. If, if a person didn't have any birth control and they just were gonna have a bunch of kids, um, that might be a life, but perhaps that's not what they wanted at all. Perhaps they wanted to go to school or do something different. And so it creates opportunity where maybe in uh, lots of places there wasn't any. Um, oh, we've got quite a bit more, so I'll go faster. 12, life expectancy. No added drug or supplement will help us live longer. It's what's not there. That's the key. I don't know what this means. Lose the irritant. 
not the inflammation, the irritant, and the cells remain young. What do we do with all that time? That answer is spiritual. Lose the irritant. I'm hoping some medical or scientific person is looking at this and go, look, I know what the irritant is. Lose the irritant and the cells remain young. 13, right to die. Must we suffer if we have a terminal illness? An individual's right to choose their lifespan is controversial and a question we now face. Who is in charge of end of life? Profit centers or the individual? Big question, morally loaded, or you know, many people see it as morally loaded or religiously loaded. Who's in charge? Profit centers, and I think that means retirement places, medical, the insurance, or the individual. 14. Personal transport. Driverless cars continue to develop, but it's what but what's new is smaller transports. E-bikes, covered e-bikes, I don't know what that is, mini cars, hover cars, small flying orbs, we've seen those a lot in this future forecasting that we've done in our soul pods, meditation groups, personal transport for one or two, roads and rail aren't the only way we travel, we take to the um, very low sky. This year or next, the orb will be developed. And because this is getting so long, I've decided I'm going to end now and just go right into a part three. I think that's easier for people to absorb if they want to take a breather. So um, lots to think about, lots to think about. Um, if you want to get the text for this, you're going to find it at sarahweisman.com. Um, under the Divine Astrology blog. Um, and also I'm going to be adding subtitles so we can have that available too. Okay, we're heading on to part three. I will uh, see you right over there.